Easter, Easter Sunday, uh, 2015. We uh, come now thinking about and celebrating the, the truth of Jesus' resurrection and the fact that Jesus is alive. And so uh, we uh, want to think about uh, opening our Hebrew Bibles to Isaiah 25, 6 through 9, as we explore what it means, you know, uh, for Jesus, are they not? No. Huh. So, are they need no huh? which is the living Jesus. All right, Isaiah 25, 6 through 9. On this mountain, God will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, a rich, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines spring clear. And God will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. God will swallow up death forever. Then God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of God's people God will take away from all the earth. For God has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for Him, or waited for God, so that God might save us. This is God, for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in God's salvation. And if you turn to your New Testament readings, we're going to go to... Uh, Maga, Ayad Allah, 16, 1 through 8. Una do da quas ga no, Ulo sona, Meili magi deli i hi, Ale, mi li, jimi, uji, Ale, salomi, Uni wasahi, Gesan, Aga, Nasda, Gawe Sangi, Une la Hizdi, Une Lance, Ale, Gawo, Lo Ne Di, Sunale, Iono, Igan Yige, Igan Yigi, Iga, Sana, Dodako. Gisani, Une la G, J. Lista, G. D. K. Lago, Pope. Iano, Ni Nuna da We, Sili, Gago, Dagi, Han, Eli, Naya, A. J. Lista, Garo, his D. A. Han, E. We Dana, Kaha, Nado. Unega hi, naya, ahana, ye sahi, uja diyona, iko iya, ye se i. Ya no, ni dawe si le i, ye zli, di, ya ye, ye, ya i, i zli. Ji sa, na se le di, i hi, i ji yoma, na si, Ja gadan an sogan yi dalahi sana pakla ani yoga na di ja kanaga a pune na na yi piano ni do we se li yi flames di yo jis ga di hez di jisa Na se li di i hi i ji yo ha niz gi ja ga na a sa ga gi da le hi sa na put la a ne 
Igana Sijaka Naga A Unainana I Asaino Jijina Ale Widiji Noha Se Gana Wazda Wadido I Ale Quida Danis Dan Nagi Igai We know his the Gaili Nahana Dayjo Gami Nazia Ne Jiwe Sela E. Who is Dino? Who Nino goes young? Dana Lee JC Ajay Lee's Nahi Danina Wiz Gayeno Ale Unesi Kwani Goes Gay. Adla Ale Gilo Gahazdi Yono Sali Anisga Ihe Ye Na In English, Mark sixteen one through eight. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. Jesus has been raised. Jesus is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Jesus, are they need don't hunt. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Not dead. And for us, on this Easter Sunday, we think about what that means to us. Why is this important to each and every one of us in our day-to-day -day lives? There's so much attention within European Christianity here in North America on the death of Jesus and not so much on the resurrection. The living Jesus. And so we want to realize today is Resurrection Sunday, and that means God raised Jesus from the grave. And there is a much dispute and discussion about if that's really true, if that's what really happened, or maybe that had some other meaning, interpretation, whatever works for them. Uh, there is such a thing in mental health as overanalyzing uh, information. There is, in reality, no way for us to actually 100% know the detailed events of what happened that day. But we do know from the Gospel of Mark, the first Gospel ever written, that an angel, apparently one of the spirit helpers, was sitting in the tomb, just sitting there, 
I mean, if you had committed a crime, if you had done something wrong, would you stick around? Would you just sit there in a white robe saying, I think I'll hang out until somebody comes along and arrests me for stealing a dead body? Yeah. I don't think so. It's, it's, in Judaic culture, even in that day, in the Roman Empire, stealing dead bodies was not cool. They really looked down upon that, especially in the Judaic religion. I mean, touching a dead person made you unclean. So no Jew in their right mind would even consider doing something like that. Or even if they were out of their minds, they wouldn't consider doing that. There's such deep cultural embedded ideology and way of life that it would not have happened. And so, yet we find this young man a symbol of vitality, of life, to all human beings in the tomb waiting for somebody to show up. And the ones that did show up were the women in the family, the, the ones who came to take care of the tasks necessary to prepare a body for internment. They were fulfilling their duty to Jesus as they had been taught and as they had been led. And when they got there, There was nobody there except this young man. They were amazed that the stone had been rolled back by itself. It was they described it as a big stone. Well, that's relatively speaking, what is a big stone? Yeah, I mean, for us, a 40-pound stone or a 60-pound stone is pretty darn heavy because I've had to move plenty of them. I know how heavy they are. So this is probably considerably larger because they needed help. It says they needed help. They were trying to think about how are we going to get this stone out of the way so we can do what we need to do. So in this one passage, we have the, the awareness that the stone had been put in place to keep anything from happening to the body. And it was going to take a lot of work to get it out of the way. And they get there and that stone's gone. So uh, we know from that get-go that God is intending to bring hope to all people right there from the start. But God has arranged for this situation to be made known that the intervention has taken place and that Jesus has been raised. And this brings us to the book of Isaiah. In Isaiah, we know that this was written specifically for the people during this time. And this is, uh, according to the writers here in this uh, analysis of this passage, uh, Samuel Ballantyne uh, looks at it and says, this was written at a time when there was this post-exilic. Uh, it may or may not have been added at a later time, but the author of this passage is clearly intending to convey a harmonious image of God's intention for the Israelites, the Judaic people of this time, of what all that has happened to them has been leading towards. This creates a picture for us to see God's fulfillment of everything that has taken place, everything that has transpired for them, and as Mr. Ballantyne points out, this is a passage that is also universal, which means it can apply to any situation, not just in the context in which it was written. And the reason we can accept that is because it is a statement by God of what God intends to do for all people. What God is pointing out in here is that there has been a barrier between God and human beings. It doesn't really describe what that barrier is. It just says that there has been a, uh, a sheet, a shroud, a sheet that has been between people and God. And we can look at that in a myriad of ways. 
one possible way, just possible way, is that human beings in the evolution of human development were not capable of comprehending the idea that God actually cares about what happens to human beings. And in this passage, we see that God does actually care what happens to human beings. And that God is making a promise to all human beings that that shroud, that sheep, is to be removed. We are to come to that understanding, that awareness, that human beings do matter. That we are important to God. That our relationship with God is important to God and to us. And God makes a promise to us in that when that sheet, when that shroud is removed, so also will be death. That we are going to be coming into a place of eternal life, eternal presence in God's Spirit, that we will endure forevermore. And we see that manifestation of that teaching, of that promise in Jesus' resurrection. God chose to raise Jesus from the grave in the fullness, in the wholeness of his being. And Jesus like in the, the writer of Isaiah was seeking to open our eyes just as Paul's eyes were opened while he was on the road to Damascus. We have to have a willingness to allow our eyes to be open to God's truth, to God's understanding of God's intention for the resurrection, for the full fulfillment of Jesus' life and the resurrection of Jesus into a state of eternal life. Jesus can't die again. Cannot happen. Will not happen. He is alive, is here right now in our lives can speak to us does speak to us we have many passages that tell us how in the dreams, visions, in the heart all kinds of ways that Jesus communicates with each and every one of us on a daily basis reminding us to strive to become a whole human being just as Jesus became in the eyes of spirit. I talked about that earlier a little bit and I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail on that right now, but the purpose of the resurrection is to demonstrate to us God's commitment to that promise that was made to us to have eternal life if we trust in God and strive each day to move forward in becoming a whole human being, walking that medicine will teach you in our lives. And so this opening of our eyes is manifest in the resurrection. And it also, there's something else in here that you have to think about. There's two aspects of this. One is we get a look at, you know, before we find out what the women actually, how they responded to what was being said, we find out what Jesus has been doing. And there's one passage in here that really just got my attention when it stands out. And he says, go tell, the young man was talking to the women, go tell the disciples and Peter, we don't know why Peter is separated out from the disciples, other than we know that he was the first one to freak out when the soldiers showed up. But go tell the disciples and Peter that Jesus is going ahead of you and we'll meet up with you in Galilee. Now, right then and there, we see a clear message that Jesus is resurrected and he's got busy. He's out there doing this stuff, not waiting for anyone to catch up. Wow. What kind of...
line of a missional ministry statement is that. He just got the crap beat out of him, just got crucified, got resurrected, didn't even think about taking a vacation, got busy doing ministry from the get-go. So, that's an example for us to pay attention to. Missional ministry, being of good service. And we see here that the amazement, terror, terror and amazement hit those women. They could not believe the reality of their own eyes, their own ears. They succumbed to the worst aspects of human nature right there on the spot. They've just been given this incredible gift and they reacted with fear out of ignorance and doubt. How do you react? How do you respond to the, the incredible awareness of this reality in your life? Because God's not waiting for anyone to catch up. God's busy reaching out through everyone who is willing to do the work. Everyone who is willing to move forward in a good way. But God is always there for those who come a little bit late. And we read more about that in a later passage. You can do a little exploration on that. But what we do see, unfortunately, is that these women panicked. And if you want to know how Jesus responded to that, you'll have to do a little more research. But today, we have to look at the reality that we as human beings are always in struggle with aspects of ourselves, those internal voices that hold us back, that keep us down. And we don't have to worry about somebody else doing it, because we do it ourselves. Imagine if these women had reacted differently. What could have happened? We'll never know. Because they didn't. What if you reacted differently than these women to the revelation that you just got shared right now? How are you going to react? You're going to let your fear, your doubt, your insecurities dominate your choices and hold you back from speaking God's truth as God calls you in your heart to speak? Or are you going to be proactive in your ministry and get out there and share the word through that good voice, that good service, setting a good example for those who follow? And just as Isaiah says, in our reading today, God welcomes all to the table. It says it right here. That God set a table for all peoples. And so must we. As Jesus set the table for all people. And he died and was resurrected for all people. So must we also have a willingness to do likewise. Anything else is segregation. God has always had our backs. And proved this through raising Jesus, who immediately got busy, got on with his mission of service, bringing hope to the powerless and a future, a promised future to the oppressed. How are you helping to make this a reality today? Walk in music.